good morning everyone. Today we'll continue with our radiologic anatomy <coughs> book club uh, with uh, on the chapter about the radiologic anatomy of the brain. Dr. Sazgar will uh, present it. May she start. Good morning everyone. Today I will present the radiological anatomy of the brain. As we know, the brain has three main parts, the cerebrum, cerebellum, and the brain stem. Cerebrum is the largest part of the brain and is composed of the right and left hemisphere. It performs higher functions like interpreting touch, vision, hearing, as well as speech, reasoning, emotion, learning, and uh, fine control of the movement. Cerebellum is located under the cerebrum. Its function is to coordinate muscle movement, maintain moisture, and the balance. The brain stem is uh, acts as a relay center connecting the cerebellum and cere cere cerebrum with the uh, cerebellum with the spinal cord. It performs many automatic functions such as breathing, heart rate, body temperature, wake and sleep cycles, digestion, sneezing, coughing, vomiting, and swallowing. Our topic is today about the cerebrum. Cerebrum, the cerebrum is divided into two halves, the right and left hemisphere, separated by each uh, by inter uh, hemispheric fissure and again connected to each other through a bundle of fibers called the corpus callosum. They are covered by the meninges. Each hemisphere is form formed of an outer layer of the gray matter, which is cerebral cortex, and inner layer of the white matter. The cerebral, co the cerebral cortex <coughs> is organized into uh, folds called the gyri, and uh, which there are CSA filled grooves between them uh, called the sulci. sulci. The deeper and more anatomically constant sulci are known as the fissures. On the superior lateral surface of the <coughs> cerebrum, we have uh, two sulci. The lateral sulci separate the frontal and temporal lobe, and the central sulci which separate the frontal from the uh, parietal lobe. The lobes of the of the brain, the cerebral hemisphere, uh, have distinct fissures which divide the brain into four four lobes. Each, yeah, each hemisphere uh, has four lobes, the frontal, parietal, temporal, and occipital lobe. In addition to that, some authors refer that uh, to uh, the insular cortex as the insular lobe and the cingulate gyrus uh, and the, the hippocampus as the limbic lobe. Here we have the uh, superior lateral surface of the uh, hemisphere. We have the central si central si uh, central sulcus, anterior to it the parietal lobe, and posterior to it is the uh, anterior to it the frontal lobe, and, and posterior to it is the uh, parietal lobe. And the lateral sulcus, lateral sulcus, so, uh, uh, the temporal lobe is inf inferior to it, and the uh, frontal lobe is superior to it. The uh, frontal and temporal lobe, each of them uh, divided into the superior, middle, inferior gyri. <coughs> the most port posterior part is the occipital, uh, occipital lobe. So, basically, you have two cerebral hemispheres yes. separated by interhemispheric fissure. fissure. Each hemisphere has two major fissures or south side, yes. which is the central. Sulcus and, and the, the Serbian fissure. Okay? Yes. And several minor sulcus. Yes. How to know which one is the central sulcus or central fissure? It is the only one that reaches the midline. You, yes. When you go the most superior cut, the yes. out, uppermost, the only one that crosses the midline, that reaches to the midline, is the central. Everything anterior to it anterior is parietal, everything posterior to it. Uh, and uh, sorry, frontal, frontal and posterior to it, it parietal. It's parietal. Yes, okay? yes. And you have below the sylvian fissure the temporal lobe. Temporal lobe. And you have something <coughs> on the medial, medial aspect of the cerebral hemisphere called the calcarine sulcus, which everything yes. posterior to it is occipital. Yes. 
Yes. And uh, on the superior lateral surface, we have no anatomical separation of these lobes. Yep. Yes. Uh, this also uh, showing set so, sarcus. As you see here, yes, the only one that reaches the midline, midline yes. is the central. central the rest, they don't. This one stops here. This one stops here. Okay. Yes. The sulci posterior to the central sulca, uh, sulcus, call it the precentral sulcus, and posterior to it, postcentral sulcus. And between them, uh, precentral gyri and postcentral gyri. On the medial surface of the hemisphere, we have the uh, parato occipital sulcus that separate the parietal from the occipital lobe. And uh, a further deep uh, sulcus of this surface, the calcarine sulcus runs anteriorly from the occipital pole, and the areas with known function include the visual cortex and the occipital uh, association cortex. Also, it's uh, posterior inferior to the occipital parato occipital sulcus. And the gray matter that uh, located superior to the uh, corpus callosum, which is the white matter, called the singular gyrus. The radiological features of the cerebral cortex, CT and MRI. Identification of lobes on CT slices depend, depends on the identification of the boundaries. The salivian fissures and uh, cistern and fissures separating the frontal and uh, temporal lobes are easily identified on the axial CT and MRI slices. The central si sulcus is less as well seen. However, uh, this lies at the transverse level, just posterior to the anterior limit of the lateral ventricle. Because CT images are obtained parallel to the canto meatal line on the upper image, the central sulcus is quite posterior in position. On axial images, it has been described as having an inverted omega shape, uh, shaped curve that marks the posterior, uh, the mark, uh, marks the position of the hand mo motor cortex, <coughs> like in this image. Number two. The parieto occipital sulcus on the medial surface of the hemisphere can be seen on CT at the level of the lateral ventricle and on midline sagittal MRI images. The parieto occipital junction on the lateral surface has no anatomical landmark, but lies ap at approximately the same transverse levis, level as the sulcus. Midline sagittal images also show the singular gyrus, the uh, and the so callosal. No, yes. the parieto occipital lobe at the lateral surface. Lateral surface, superior lateral, medial, medial surface. surface. The lateral, there is nothing. Yes, there is no anatomical separation. Mm -hmm. Number three. The interior surface of the and the frontal, parietal, temporal opercula can be seen on the axial CT and MRI imaging in all planes. What do you mean by opercula? Opercula, opercula? the part of the frontal, parietal, and temporal lobe, uh, this area called the upper, uh, that located under the insula called the opercula. Over here, it's over the insula, not under the insula. Over, over. Uh, First. Yes. Second, what is the meaning of opercula? Translation. Apericulum is a Latin word. It means cover. Yes. Okay, rubber, rubber, or cover. There are parts, they just cover the insula. They bury the insula under them. If you remove the apericula, tuck, 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 you will see the insula deep to them. Deep to them. So, just by looking at the brain, you will not see the insula. You need to remove the cover, the apericula, in order to see what's underneath, which is the insula. Okay? Yes. Uh, middle surface of the cerebellum and uh, the mesagital MRI of the brain showing the this is uh, the singular gyrus located above uh, uh, superior to the corpus callosum, the uh, central sulcus, uh, number three, the uh, parato occipital sulcus. Okay, here it is. Just a second. The corpus callosum and the 
fornix. The superior lateral surface of the cerebral hemisphere and sagittal MRI of the brain lateral to the midline, also showing the singulate, uh, central sarcus. Where is Para the Yes. No. Yeah, this one. This one. It's yes. No. Okay, this reaching the uppermost. Upper it reaches okay. to the midline. The upper shield cell is the central. Okay. And everything I tell you is frontal, frontal and parietal. parietal. And you cannot separate it from the occipital on the lateral surface. You need to go to the middle middle surface, surface yes. for the yes. parietal occipital surface. Yes. Uh, the parietal occipital uh, sulcus, the insula, and the this is insula? the tim number three. You definitely cannot see the insula without removing the follicular. Yes. Okay. Yes. The uh, temporal horn of the lateral ventricles and the hippocampus. This is the hippocampus. Yes. We will talk about it later. Axial cut of the CT scan also showing the frontal lobe. The parietal lobe. Where is the central sulcus? Uh, Where is it? I not shown here. Not okay. shown. Yes. Shown. Where is it? This. This. Point to it. Central sulcus. Central. Midline. Go to the midline. Yeah, no, midline. It's the only one reaching the midline. Which one is reaching the midline? This. This, this oh, one this reaching one. the midline. This one and this one. So everything anterior to it is frontal, posterior to it is parietal. Yes. Okay? Yes. You go to the midline, looking for which one is reaching to the midline is the center. Central sulcus, yes. No. Midline superior. Okay? Also here, the singular uh, gyrus. Pre-central sulcus, which located uh, anterior to the central uh, gyrus, uh, located anterior to the central uh, sulcus. Uh, the interhemispheric uh, fissure, which separate uh, both right and left hemispheres. Uh, and the parietal occipital sulcus, which separate the parietal lobe from the occipital lobe. The axial cut of the MRI so to... Okay. The axial cut of MRI... T2 weighted image also showing the uh, this is the superior uh, frontal gyri, the middle frontal gyri, this uh, central sulcus anterior to it, the uh, pre central uh, gyri, and posterior to it, post central su sulcus. Uh, this also central sulcus here. The white matter. There are th three ty types of the fiber of within the cerebral hemisphere. The commissural fissure, uh, fibers, fibers. commissural fibers, fi fibers connect corresponding, corresponding areas of the uh, two hemispheres. The largest part of it is the corpus callosum, large midline mass connecting corresp corresponding area of both hemispheres becomes progressively thicker toward this uh, it is end, its posterior end. It has three parts. The rostrum, rostrum is the first part, the geno. Uh, this is the most anterior part where it bends sharply backward and the body it lies below the lower free edge of the falcus cerebri. The splenium thickening posterior end. The fiber is from the geno that backwards to for, uh, forward to the uh, frontal cortex called the forceps, forceps minor and the uh, fibers from the splenium passing posteriorly to the occipital cortex called the forceps major. The anterior commissure, this is a bundle of fibers in the anterior wall of the third ventricle. Habenular fissure, small fissures situated above the penile Body. body. The posterior fissure situated anterior and inferior to the penial body. Penial, no penile. Pe penile penile. Penis. Eh. penile <laughs> is penis. Penial is penial. Penial. This is the corpus callosum. 
the uh, gray matter above the corpus callosum called the cingulate gyri and the forceps minor and forceps major The fibers and uh, arches posteriorly to the occipital cortex called the forte forceps major. So you have two forceps, forceps yes, minor, minor and major. major. Yes. Minor is the anterior one. Anterior. The, the frontal part of the cortex. Yes. While yes. Major is the posterior one. Going through the posterior part of the corpus callosum, and the corpus callosum is the largest commissural fiber collection binding or connecting both yes. cerebral yes. hemispheres. Yes. This is the anterior commissure, which is located in, uh, in front of the third ventricle. The second uh, type, projection fibers, fibers join the cortex to the lower center. It has anterior capsule and the corona yeah, yeah. internal ca internal capsule and the corona radiata. The corona radiata as the fibers funnels, uh, fun out between the internal capsule and the cerebral cortex. Internal capsule consists of the anterior limb and posterior limb. The anterior limb is uh, located between the caudate and the lentiform. Where is the anterior limb on this limb right now? This is the caudate and the lentiform here. You don't see the anterior and posterior okay. limbs on coronal images. Coronal. You see it on axial images. Yes. Okay? You see it on the lower limb. Yes, uh, here. Uh, and the posterior limb uh, be located between the lentiform and the thalami. The both limbs meet at the angle, right angle, called the genome. The genome and the posterior anterior two th uh, uh, anterior two thirds of the posterior limb contain motor fibers. Association fibers connect different parts of the cortex of the same hemisphere. So you have commissure. Projection, projection and association. Association. Commission connects two parts of the cerebral hemisphere. Hemisphere. Uh, projection, the projection connects brain with, brain with the body. Central, uh, lower Let's part. Let's say with yes. body. Yes. Okay. And association connects different parts of the of brain. the same hemisphere. Okay. Yes. The uh, MRI tectography showing fiber is passing from the brain stem to the cerebral cortex. So which are which fibers are these? Projection, Pro commission, or association. Uh, commissural. No, uh, These fibers shown here. Lala, uh, doctor, uh, uh, mm. Projection. 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 Yes. Yeah. They connect the brain with the body. Yes. Radiological features of the commissural and projected fibers. Plain film of the skull. Uh, classification of the habilinal commissure is a common finding on skull radiographs. It found anterior and superior to the pineal gland. If uh, this is called, uh, uh, this is uh, also classified. Typically, the classification is C-shaped, with open part of the liter facing backwards. Some authors suggest th that this classification is the uh, in the choroid plexus of the third ventricle, the tinea habilinal, rather than the CT and MRI. The corpus callosum cannot be well seen on the axial CT slice. The internal capsule is seen as a P-shaped low attenuation or high T1 signal structure between the caudate and the lentiform anteriorly and the lentiform thalamus posteriorly. The rostrum genome body splenium can be seen on the sagittal MRI. The anterior posterior commissures can also be seen in this view. On this view, a line joining the anterior and posterior commissures, the uh, anterior uh, commissure and posterior commissure line is used as a reference on image guided procedure. On coronal MRI scans, the body of the carpus callosum and the tapetium can be seen superior to the lateral ventricles and the internal capsule can be seen lateral to the thalami. On this view, the anterior commissure may also be visible uh, inferior to the third ventricle, but this commissure is best seen on, uh, as uh, an arc of fibers on axial MRI. The white matter on T1 appears as what? Hyper or hypo? 
the white matter on T1 mm -hmm. hyper. Hyper. Yes. So the internal capsule is white or gray matter? White. So it appears as what on T1? Uh, hyper. Okay. Yes. Why it is hyper on T1? Because it contains water. Contains water. water. Mm. 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 Here we have the uh, cortex minor within the frontal cortex and the cortex major uh, within the occipital cortex, oh. the anterior limb of the uh, internal capsule. This is the anterior posterior limb of the uh, internal capsule. External capsule we have here. Uh, this is the genome of the corpus callosum and the splenium. Posterior to it, the splenium of the corpus callosum. And what about the corpus striatum? Striatum? Corpus striatum, where is it? Mm. Anybody? Corpus striatum? Mm. Ah, you know what? Mm. When you look carefully, especially more obvious on T1, but anyway, if you look carefully, you can see some faint fibers connecting the Inter the oh, lentiform nucleus to the, to the caudate, caudate head of caudate. Yes. This, this is striations. So this whole thing, the lentiform nucleus with the head of caudate, it's called corpus striatum. Mm -hmm. Okay, because it's connected by striations. Look carefully in the good images, you'll see. Yes. Yeah. About the gray matter which contain basal ganglia and the thalamine, the caudate nucleus consists of the head body tail, lies within the concavity, <coughs> it lies within the concavity of the lateral ventricle. Okay. It is head project projects into the floor of the anterior horn, and its body lies uh, uh, along the body of the lateral ventricle. It still lies within the roof of the temporal horn of this ventricle. We have the lentiform uh, nucleus. This is shaped like a biconcave nucleus. It has a larger, uh, lar it has a larger lateral putamen and the smaller medial globus pallosidum. Medially, globus pallidum, pallidus. Pallidus. Yes. <laughs> Medially, it's separated from the head of the uh, head of the caudate and. Uh, uh, anteriorly from the and from the thalamus posterior by the internal capsule. A thin layer of white matter on its surface is called the extreme external Sorry. capsule. Yes. Colostrum, this is a thin sheet of the gray matter, this is the colostrum, lies between the putamen and the insula. It's separated medially from the Putamen by the external capsule and from the insula by the uh, extreme capsule, just deep to the insula. So you have internal uh, lentiform nucleus, yes. medial internal capsule, lentiform nucleus, lentiform. external, external capsule. capsule, colostrum, extreme, Ex extreme capsule, capsule, insula. insula. This yes. has a perception. Yes. Yeah, I mean, again. Internal capsule, anterior caudate, yes. posterior thalamus. thalamus. Then lentiform nucleus, then external capsule, which is white matter. Then colostrum, colostrum. gray matter. Yes. Then extreme capsule, extreme white, white matter. White matter. Yeah, a bit of a and the insula also with the gray matter. Okay. This is the caudate uh, head, the uh, putamen, globus pallidus, pa uh, yes. the uh, internal capsule, uh, and the colostrum, colostrum, yes, colostrum. What is the amygdala? 
I'm going to be located anterior to the hippocampus. And it was in the temporal lobe. What's the word located? Temporal lobe. What is a part of the cognitive? The most inferior the head, the, part the, of the, the code. You call it a C shape. The caudate co and this other amygdala. Yeah, the code is C shape. Yes. The last part of the C mm -hmm. is amygdala. Yes. It is just rounded. So amygdala means nose. Nose number. Mm -hmm. Habat al nose. Okay? Yes. Almost. Yes. Okay? What is it responsible for? Anybody knows? Amygdala? What's the job of the amygdala? In fact, amygdala, amygdala may be one of the most important uh, things in, in, in human survival in history. It's ep epilepsy. Ah, hippocampus. Okay. Amygdala is one part of the limbic system. Yes. Limbic system is responsible for what's called fight or flight. Okay? When you face a danger, you either fight it or you fly. Okay? Someone who's trying to kick you, to punch you. You either fight him or you escape. Yes. Yes. So this decision made in your limbic system. Okay? When you go to a cat, you try to hurt her. She either scratch or she escapes. How does she choose? Using the limbic system. Yes. And it's also responsible for inhibition. People who have something wrong with the amygdala, they uh, have no inhibition. You can't see him walking naked in the street. You know, mm -hmm. The internal capsule anteriorly separates the caudate from the lentiform uh, nucleus and the posterior separates the lentiform from the thalami. Thalamus. The thalamus paired bodies of gray matter lies in the walls of the third ventricle. Each has, each, each has uh, apex an anteriorly and more rounded posterior end called the pulvinar. The thalamus is attached in approximately 60% of cases to the thalami of, of other side by the interthalamic adhesion or massa intermedia. This is not neural connection. Radiological feature. We should stop here in this week and we continue next week, okay. inshallah. Because it's almost nine and I don't want the chocolate to be angry. <laughs> okay? Okay. Uh, so next week? Sure. Uh, okay. Later. <laughs>